I'm working on building a replica of the Gamma Gun from Fallout 4, and this won't necessarily be a fully fleshed out tutorial, but I will try to describe my process in as much detail as I can so that hopefully it'll be helpful for anyone else who might be interested in building one. I started with the circuit boards that make up the body of the gun. I want to make this as detailed and as screen accurate as I could, so I decided to try fabricating actual circuit boards. There are three different circuit board designs, and using screenshots from the game, I drew up these templates for each one. In this video, I'm going to be focusing on this one. I printed out the designs on regular printer paper, and for the method I'm showing, it has to be done with a toner-based laser printer. Inkjet printers will not work. I got these 7 by 10 centimeter copper clad boards, which can be bought pretty inexpensively from most electronics websites. The first step is to prep the board by buffing the copper plated side with a scouring pad, or you can use very fine sandpaper or steel wool. Just get the whole surface nice and shiny. Then wipe the board down with acetone or rubbing alcohol to remove any dust, fingerprints, or any other residue. Make sure it's really clean so you get a good clear transfer. Next step is to transfer the pattern from the paper to the copper. You can use nail polish remover for this, but you'll get more consistent results with a mix of acetone and rubbing alcohol. Whatever you decide to use, make sure you're working in a well-ventilated area. After coating the board in the solvent and applying the template, give it about 10 seconds to set in, and then rub the paper to stick the toner down to the board. Apply firm, even pressure, but don't rub so hard that you tear the paper. When the paper is almost dry, you can peel it off. You can see that some of the paper ripped and stuck to my board, but you can dip it in water and gently rub the rest of the paper away. The toner is waterproof, so you don't need to worry about damaging the transfer. You can see that in some places, the lines didn't transfer completely solid. The black lines are the areas where I want the copper to stay, and any exposed copper will be etched away, so I want these lines to be as solid as possible. To clean them up a little, I went over the design with a permanent marker. Now the board is ready for etching. I didn't want to have to order any specialty chemicals, and fortunately this can be done with stuff you can find around the house. All you need is white vinegar, hydrogen peroxide, and salt. Even though these are common household substances, you should always take proper safety precautions when handling acids and oxidizers. Wear gloves and eye protection, and always work in a well-ventilated area. To make my etching solution, I used a mix of 60% vinegar, 40% peroxide, and a couple tablespoons of salt. You don't need to be super precise with the proportions, but you do need to make sure that you are mixing and storing the solution in glass or plastic containers only. Pour the solution over the board, and you should see it start to bubble almost immediately. Then just leave it in a well-ventilated area to do its thing, which can take an hour or more. The warmer it is, the faster it will etch. Check in on it every 20 minutes or so, and if it looks like the reaction is slowing down, I found that mixing in some more salt will give it a boost. Here's how it looked after about an hour. There were still some spots that weren't fully etched, but I noticed that the permanent marker didn't hold up very well in some spots, and I didn't want parts of the design to get lost, so I took it out of the etch early. I dunked it in a solution of baking soda and water to neutralize the acid, and then rinsed it off in the sink. The toner transfer held up pretty well. The endpoints, however, were done with just permanent marker, and you can see a lot of the ink had come off before the etch was done. After cleaning off all the toner with acetone, this is what I was left with. It looks a little rough, but since it's supposed to be part of a weapon cobbled together out of chunk from a nuclear wasteland, I'm pretty happy with it. All there was left to do was add some blobs of solder to all the endpoints, and the board is pretty much done. I needed to make two of these, so I decided to try something a little bit different for the second one. I had recently been given a vinyl cutting machine, and I thought this would be a good opportunity to test out the pen tool. I drew a slightly modified version of the pattern in the cutting machine software, put the board in, and the machine traced the pattern directly onto the copper. I was really happy with how well this worked. It was much quicker and easier than the toner transfer for laying out the basic pattern, but it still needed a little more work before it was ready for etching. Since permanent marker didn't hold up very well, I decided to use nail polish this time. I painted a couple layers over the lines from the vinyl cutting machine and then put it in the etch the same way as the first one. The nail polish was a lot sturdier than the permanent marker, so I was able to keep it in the etch longer and not leave patches of unetched copper like the first one. And here are the two finished boards side by side. The nail polish one is on the left and the toner one is on the right. 
The next thing to work on is the other two circuit board designs with all the little electronic components on them, so keep an eye out for a video on those in the near future. Thanks for watching.